This is a Beggy Sisa podcast. Welcome to another edition of a Beggy Sisa Centre for Health Journalism podcast. I'm your host, Mia Malan. The March edition of the Pan African magazine, The New African, has a shocking headline that reads We deliberately spread AIDS in South Africa, says apartheid era intelligence officer. The quote originates from a Danish film with the name Cold Case Hammerschuld that was released at the Sundance Film Festival in January in the United States. In it, a former apartheid agent, Alexander Jones, alleges that the outfit he had worked for attempted to wipe out black South Africans in the early 1990s by injecting HIV into vaccinations. But according to the New York Times, Jones gave the film's producers contradictory accounts. Notes from interviews conducted with Jones before the final taping of the film reflect that he had repeatedly denied that his group was involved in an AIDS project. But nonetheless, this debate has taken to Twitter big time. So could this be true? Because Issa has turned to an expert to find the answers. Professor Salim Abdul Karim is a world-renowned HIV researcher. He heads up the Centre for the AIDS Programme of Research, Caprisa, in Durban. He says we need to turn to science to find the answers and look at what the genetic properties of HIV look like in South Africa today. Several large studies undertaken in South Africa that have looked at the genetic sequences of the viruses that are being transmitted have shown that we have a highly diverse set of viruses. Indeed, we have in South Africa viruses that closely mimic or resemble viruses that come from Zambia, viruses that are circulating in Malawi, viruses circulating in Mozambique and Botswana. We know that South Africa has many of these different viruses all spreading at the same time. It's thought that much of this occurred when the epidemic really took off in South Africa, which coincides roughly with the period between 1990 and 1995. So given that we have so many different strains of HIV circulating in South Africa, we do not have a single source epidemic. In other words, we don't have one kind of HIV that has been spreading around. And it fits in well with our understanding of the way migrant labor has impacted this region and the way in which the virus entered into South Africa and then spread in many different pockets. We therefore know that in this country, we do not have a single strain of HIV or a few strains of HIV. We have many, many different kinds of HIV that are spreading that come from all of our neighbors. So... If HIV was introduced, as is alleged in this documentary, and through having added it to a vaccine, would the diversity of the virus have looked different? Well, the first point is to introduce a virus into an injectable form and to be able to ensure that it remains viable in the vials or in the syringes will take quite an effort to be able to do that. The technology to be able to do that has only recently even become available, and it would take very substantial infrastructure to be able to do that. So short of having equipment and the capabilities that were present in the U.S. CDC at the time, I would say that the prospect of that was close to zero. But let's, for argument's sake, somebody did manage to do that. 
If that was so, we would see a completely different epidemic in South Africa. We would not see a high diversity of different viruses. If indeed a virus or a set of viruses were spread through this kind of approach of injecting it into the population and then letting it spread, we would have seen a much smaller diversity of viruses. We would not see viruses from all our different neighbors in the current mosaic of viruses that we see. So if it is true what has been alleged, it is incompatible with what we are seeing in terms of the genetic diversity of viruses we see in South Africa at the moment. So if, as you've explained now, that it's unlikely for these theories to be true, why do you think they continue to circulate in South Africa? It is most unfortunate that in South Africa there are many conspiracy theories that fall on fertile ground. Whether they are conspiracy theories like HIV does not exist or whether they are conspiracy theories that they were made in some laboratory in the world and then if infected into black people in Africa to rid the world of black people, or whether it feeds into conspiracy theories built on the apartheid regime of whites trying to eliminate the black population. All of these are rumors and conspiracies that are widely propagated in South Africa. And they're not related to HIV only. They're related to a range of different things. So I think HIV, because it carries such a stigma, because it carries uh, the way in which it impacts on the most vulnerable people in our society, we try to explain it away. And we try to blame others for what has happened. We don't want to look at ourselves and we don't want to acknowledge often that our own behaviors and the way in which our society is structured places us at risk of HIV infection. And to avoid that, it's easier to just blame other people. And so we find others to blame and it helps in dealing with the psychological trauma of HIV. That was Professor Salim Abdul Karim from the Centre for the AIDS Programme of Research Caprisa in Durban. South Africa is one of the largest HIV epidemics in the world. According to the country's latest household survey, one out of five adults have HIV. Professor Abdul Karim says we now need to focus on what we know works to prevent the transmission of the virus, like condoms, the HIV prevention pool, medical male circumcision and treatment. That's the end of our podcast. Now's a good time to look up the Becker Sisa Centre for Health Journalism on SoundCloud or iTunes and follow us. You can also find us on Twitter on at Becker underscore. MG. Until next time, I'm Mia Malan. Malan.